All landscapes are defined by light and color. Light casts shadows, creates values, creates the structure of a painting, while color c imbues a sense of mood and atmosphere. Watercolor is uniquely suited to do landscape paintings. Its natural luminosity creates a glow in the landscape, while its singular softness creates, is perfect for um, trees, greenery, um, water. This painting here is, was based on a quick uh, plein air sketch I did in Lakeville, California of a sheep ranch. What always interests me is the juxtaposition of buildings and the landscape, just because there's a natural tension that's created. And in this case, we've got the weathered barns, the eucalyptus tree, and the pasture. I always think about foreground, middle ground, and background. This definitely has a background. The middle ground are the, the barns, but there really wasn't much of a foreground. And so I remembered the sheep that were kind of, kind of over off, off, this, off this direction, who just ha didn't happen to be in their paddock at the moment. So I shifted a bunch of things. I put in the sheep and thought, okay, the story is about the, now, the sheep in the paddock, as well as these barns. The steeper the angle, I do something that's close to 45 degrees, but the steeper the angle, it e it's easy, the easier it is to do a graduated wash like this, or a graded wash. Because you, you just keep that, the, the gravity is keeping that bead coming down the page. If you do something flat, it, it, gravity doesn't work. So this is, I, I would experiment to, to finding one, you know, keep increasing the angle until you're really comfortable with it. If it gets too steep, of course, you'll get drips. So there is a fine line between the two. But this will make your life, life much, much easier. And you can see some of this red uh, or the burnt scarlet show through the green, which I th is a nice effect. And um, a lot of artists, including the Impressionists, have, you, have used this where they want something to look a little brighter green. And the best way to make it look brighter green is put some red into it, or red next to it, or orange even. So this is the thing about watercolor, working wet and wet like this, to me is, is um, really what watercolor is all about, because no other medium that I know of um, has this ability to kind of flow and mingle. Um, and you know, you can overdo it, of course, but um, but it's a technique to kind of it's such a powerful technique that it's uh, it's really worth keeping in your tool chest. I mean, when I drew these sheep, I, I was kind of paying attention, and I see my line work in here. But you, what I want to do with a p shadow pattern like this is link it together, so it's not just one shadow, one shadow, one shadow. So I want these to the extent possible, without kind of forcing the issue, to have this shadow constantly touching something else. Okay, so you get to a point here at the end of the painting where you kind of begin to think, okay, you know, I need to just do something over there, you know, really that should have been a little bit darker. Um, but I get to it, but I've, I've learned over time that it's best to just kind of stop let it all dry, put it away for a few days, and then look at it and forget about what you were trying to do and evaluate for what it is.